Hey guys, Rokan Bosco here, and welcome back to another Halo challenge. In 6 of the 13 missions that are in Halo 2, you don't have to kill any of the enemies, so I'm only gonna discuss these highlighted missions. Anyway, today I decided to beat Halo 2 with only grenades, because why wouldn't you enjoy watching an elite scream in terror as they realize how fucked they are, over and over again. I decided to play on normal difficulty for this challenge, because easy mode was created for idiots, and heroic and legendary is just suicidal, because I'm not the master chief from the books. There's also boss fights in Halo 2, but I have a contingency plan for that, which I'll explain a little later. Anyway, let's get right into the challenge. Starting out, I knew this challenge was only for the bravest, most masculine men around. Unfortunately, I am a little pussy, so I ran by everyone until I got to the first hangar bay. I had to kill everyone in this room to proceed with the level, so I picked up some grenades with my telekinesis, as a normal person does, and I started blowing up aliens, dead aliens, and ambushers who get ambushed by the ambushee. Then when I was in the second hangar bay, I made the covenant eat my plasma grenades, and my M9HEDP QRS TUV WX Y and Z fragmentation grenades. From here until the bomb, there's plenty of covenant that you can run past, so of course I killed some on the way there because it was a blast, but I made sure to save some grenades since you have to kill all the covenant here to finish the mission. Two grunts and four elites. It's probably a really bad idea to detonate grenades around a bomb that could easily destroy the entire space station, but luckily the bomb was reinforced with the strongest plot armor. So I made quick work of the Covenant without wasting a single grenade, I killed every man, woman, and alien child on board that ship, and then I beat the mission. In mission 2, we're supposed to take the fight to the surface, but we were still flying above it. So the Covenant helps us out by shooting us down, and now we gotta walk like a couple of normies. Of course there's really no need to talk about this mission since I didn't even kill anyone, but the same can't be said for mission 3. Just like mission 2, you can ignore most enemies in this mission by putting the pedal to the metal. Even though my teammates only have like 3 brain cells, they were still a big help to me in the wraith section because I definitely wouldn't be able to get past both of them without my teammates help. Although, I alone had to kill the scarab. But destroying the scarab only means killing the two pilots and an elite that I'm gonna call Theodore. Killing these three boys makes the mission end for whatever reason. The only logical conclusion I came to is that the scarab dies of depression. But it doesn't really matter why it dies because that concludes the mission and now we get to play as the Arbiter. In mission 4, we go to a place in the heavens to send a heretic to hell, but mission 4 is another mission I'm not going to go into detail on, because you don't have to kill anyone in this mission. But in mission 5, a direct continuation of this mission, you do have to kill some enemies, so let's just jump right into that one. I tracked the heretic leader down to this location, and he agreed to let us kill him if we won at hide and seek tag. He was the 3 year consecutive winner of hide and seek tag in the covenant, but lucky for us, this is the kind of extraordinary crisis arbiters were created for. Anyway, this is the first mission where we encounter Flood, but since I have my invisibility ability, I can sneak past most of them without having to fight. I waited to go on the elevator until it descended a bit to avoid combat, and then for the rest of the ride I just hid in this little cubby. Sometimes the sentinels would burn a hole through my left nipple tit, but after some trial and error, I made it to the room of prolonged boredom. You don't have to kill anyone to proceed, but Jesus regret. You have to wait in this area for about 10 to 20 minutes before the doors open, and waiting around doing nothing doesn't exactly get any dopamine flowing through my body, so I started blowing shit up. There was a lot of grenades here, so by the time I got through to the next section, my pockets were still full of grenades. Assuming aliens have pockets. Before I killed the heretic, I had to clear this room of enemies, but there was only a single combat form and a sentinel, so nothing too troublesome. The heretic was having second thoughts because of his social anxiety. I couldn't help but see myself in him, a fellow pussy so I decided to help him face his fears by turning on the gravity. 
To do that, I need to cut three cables that are suspending his house. Grenades don't cut it, so I had to use my sword. But I don't consider this a fail, because it's not like I have to kill an enemy or anything, it's just some cables. But hey, if you want to be like, oh, he failed, he used a sword, then be my guest. So I chased the heretic back to the hangar, but we were beyond civility, because it was high noon, so now I was obligated to kill him. Finally, I could execute my contingency plan, since this is the first boss fight of Halo 2. Operation, bombard the bitch with bombs until he blows up. All it took was a single plasma grenade, so the fight was over in 5 seconds, which was very underwhelming, but with that, the mission ends. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, consider leaving a like, a comment, and subscribing. Mission 6 has a pretty intense start, but Master Chief is a pretty intense dude, so it's nothing we can't handle. What in oblivion is that? Sentry, what do you see? Delta Halo is one of the best missions in the game, but it's very easy to get out of the map, and like always, I could run past everyone in the level, because there was only four honor guards standing between me and the mission's end. Your inventory carries over into mission 7, so after I killed the first three guards, I restocked on plasma grenades, I bamboozled the elite, pulled off a sneaky stick, and I beat the mission. But immediately after in mission 7 is where things get hairy. My comrades cleared us a path from the start of the mission to the place where the hunters get dropped off. I became very sad, because friendly fire seems to be the main cause of death around here. Not only did I kill both of my teammates due to their lack of getting the fuck out of the blast zone, but even the Covenant were taking out their comrades. But in the end it's all good, because I get two new best friends, and they did a great job of helping me out throughout the facility and on the gondolas. But the real reason why this mission is important is taking out the Prophet of Regret. Once again it was time to execute Operation Bombard the Bits with Bombs until he blows up. Regret has a shield around him, so you have to throw a grenade on him as you board his high chair, or else the grenade will just fuck off. He was a slippery bastard though, because he escaped me once by leaving his chair, and then I came to understand the meaning of his name, because I really regretted sticking a grenade to my own face. But I had enough, so when I respawned, I did the exact same thing as I did before, it worked, so Regret died this time, and then I said fuck you to the definition of insanity. And that concludes Mission 7. Now, I could talk about Missions 8 and 9, but you don't have to kill literally anything in both of the missions. I only ever killed out of boredom, and the only important thing is Tartar Sauce pushes the Arbiter into Halo's asshole, and that concludes the mission. Gravemind is just a big stinky block of dick cheese. It took me about 2 hours and 30 minutes to beat because I don't spawn with grenades, and there aren't any in the room. And to even leave the room, I need to dispose of all the swine currently residing in the council chamber. So the only thing I could think of doing was to get the brutes to kill the grunts, and then when the grunts dropped their grenades, I would pick up and use the grenades to kill the brutes. The hard part was everything. The brutes rarely shoot the grunts when I use them as a shield, and instead, the missed shots hit the wall. But if I instead followed the grunts and use myself as a shield, the Brutes think they have a clear shot at me, but since I'm playing on normal mode, they miss most of their shots, and they end up shooting their co-workers in the face. The amount of grenades they drop is based on RNG, so I had to redo this part at least 50 times until I was able to kill the first wave. Then when the second wave came, I did the same thing over and over again, until I was able to get past it after another 50 attempts. But then there's the last wave, and in order to get by this part, I need 3 plasma grenades, because 3 brute spawn and they seem to have a 1% chance of dropping grenades. I tried dozens of times, but I could never get the grunts to drop the 4 grenades that I needed for the last wave. So after literally an hour and a half of this, I quit, I turned on the catch skull, which causes enemies to drop more grenades when they die, but it also makes them throw a lot more grenades, so it was a double edged sword. I used the same strategy of getting the brutes to kill the grunts, and finally after a painful hour and 45 minutes, I finally made it to the last wave with 3 grenades. I finished off the brutes, and I left that godforsaken shithole. But immediately afterwards, I have to bust my brohamos out of jail. 
Luckily, before I went to prison, I made the brutes kill some grunts again so I could restock on grenades, but this part was still really hard. All the enemies were being aggressive as fuck, but since we're in tight quarters, it was easy to take out multiple dudes at once, and they were just shitting out the grenades thanks to the catch skill, so that was helpful. I freed my teammates, but sadly, they were getting fucking sniped, so I didn't exactly do them a favor. I ran past the civil war that was happening around me, until I got to the section where Blow Me Away starts tingling my cock and nuts. I was just chilling out and waiting for everyone to die, and then the elite smelt a pussy ass bitch, so they started chasing me. They gain a lot of confidence when they have those swords in their hands, but it's only a death sentence for them because as long as I'm keeping my distance, I can throw a grenade into their mouths without fear of dying. Then it was just the hunters and I. I used up a lot of grenades on the first hunter. At this point, suicide seemed a lot faster than homicide, so I made the hunter kill himself by using the death pit. I killed the last elite, Mercy gets left for dead by Tartar Sauce and Truth, and I beat the mission. Mission 11 is another mission that I don't need to discuss, purely because of the fact that I don't need to kill anyone in this mission. So the Arbiter meets up with Halfjaw, we discuss the genocide of our people, and I beat the mission. Mission 12 takes less than 5 minutes to beat, and I don't have to kill anyone in this mission. All I need to worry about is getting aboard the Forerunner ship so I can attempt to, and fail, at killing Truth. And now we're on the last mission of the game. Once again I'm the Arbiter, and now we gotta stop one big monkey. My teammates in this mission were fucking monsters. Any time I needed to kill enemies to proceed with the mission, they had my back, so goddamn, I promoted them all to best teammate rank 1. I team up with Johnson, and now I had to defend him. He wouldn't move forward until all the wraiths were out of the way. He destroyed the first two, but the last one was hiding. I kept asking the tank driver to pull over and exit the vehicle, but after a few attempts at this, I realized why he wasn't following my orders. The reason why he wouldn't exit the vehicle was because he didn't know where handicapped parking was, so I did the kind gesture of showing him where it was, and then we could finally proceed. Johnson blows open the door, we head inside, and successfully talking it out with your enemies is for anime characters, so now we gotta fucking kill him. In order to kill Tartar Sauce, I had to wait for Johnson to shoot him three times, and then it would create an opening for my grenades. Once again, my teammates were awesome as ever. The elites would bravely sacrifice themselves so I could use the grenades they dropped, and not everyone was very helpful, but hey, at least they tried. It took a few minutes because I kept missing or the grenade would bounce off his hammer, but eventually, with a great and mighty yeet, I successfully executed Operation Bombard the Bitch with Bombs until he blows up. We all become friends, and I beat the game. So was I able to beat Halo 2 with only grenades? Hell yes I was. I did have to cut the cables with the sword, and I had to use the catch skull in mission 10, but I never had to kill an enemy with anything other than a grenade. Well, consider leaving a like, a comment, and subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next one.